All right, well, welcome back. Um, we've just completed our 1x uh, part piece of the graphic organizer. Of course, we started with a stellar nursery here. We have 1x on this line, and of course, 1x is a star that's one times the size of our sun, which of course is the size of our sun. Uh, and 1x stars all begin as main sequence stars. They fuse hydrogen atoms together to make helium. Uh, it produces a tremendous amount of energy, and they'll run like that for billions of years. But when they run out of hydrogen, then they become giant stars, and giant stars fuse three helium atoms together to make carbon atoms, and they produce a lot of energy. And when they run out of helium, they're not big enough to smush the carbon together, and so when they run out of, of atoms to fuse and they can't fuse anymore, then you get a nova explosion and the inner core shrivels down becomes a white dwarf star the outer shell becomes a new nebula which brings us right back to the stellar nursery the, the beginning part again so that's where we just covered the 2x and the 3x varieties are gonna be very similar so I think the next two will be able to to accomplish in probably half the time as the first one so if we start all the way back at a stellar nursery phase then, of course, we've got our, our beautiful nebula here, the Eta Carina Nebula. It's one of my favoritest pictures of any nebula out there. And yes, I'm that geeky. I have a favorite picture of a nebula. Um, now we're going to go along the 2x line here, the middle line. And 2x stars, brace yourself, children, begin as a main sequence star amazing and they fuse hydrogen atoms together to make helium crazy and look even the animation looks the same so you have protons being smushed together to make atoms with two protons and atoms with two protons are helium and so a star shines even a 2x begins its life just like the 1x as a main sequence but even a 2x will eventually run out of hydrogen. Even though it's two times the size of our sun, it's going to eventually run out of fuel. I mean, there's only a certain amount of hydrogen in there. And take a wild guess. When it runs out of hydrogen, it becomes a giant star, much bigger than its main sequence uh, stage. And just like before, they become bigger. They lose temperature. They become cooler and they become brighter and you'll get a color change so 2x stars um, if they start off yellow if they start off um, white or blue or whatever color they're gonna shift down towards a cooler color like oranges and reds that's where most giants end up and they're fusing three heliums together to make a carbon atom and more energy now if you remember with the 1x star when they ran out of this they just simply were not big enough to put carbon atoms together to continue to fuse bigger and bigger atoms. 2x stars do not have that same problem. 2x stars can actually take their carbon and begin smashing it together to make bigger and bigger atoms. So 2x giants can actually stay at this for a longer chunk of time. But eventually, even the 2x giants are going to get to the point where they make atoms that are so big that they cannot push them together because bigger atoms have more protons and you know what it's like the bigger the magnets are if they're both positive the harder it is to smush them together and so even a 2x will eventually get to the point where it can't fuse anymore refuse and diffuse as they say and when you get to that point oh it's sad when you get to that point no shocks here oh look it's different it's not a nova it's a supernova and if I play the animation for you, ooh, ah. Except you wouldn't be saying that if you were a planet going around the star. You'd be going, ooh, ah, and then you'd be dead. Uh, supernova stars, uh, or supernovas, when they explode, they'll take every planet, every moon with them. Then they scatter their, their particles, their atoms, back out into space. And of course, that's part of the cycle of a star, returning the atoms back to the universe so that the universe gets another chance to form a new solar system with them. Now you'll notice you have two arrows over here on the 2x, just like you had on the 1x. You could probably already anticipate one of these arrows, the shorter one, shows the core collapsing. But it's not going to collapse down to a white dwarf. A white dwarf, if you remember, was what a 1x does, and it shrinks to about the size of the Earth. 
a 2x, ironically, because it's bigger and it has more gravity, is going to shrink down to something even smaller. So bigger stars end up collapsing into smaller dead stars. And you get down to a tiny neutron star. And that's, that's where it ends. And remember, a neutron star is a star, a dead star, shrunk down to the size of a city. So take like a star twice as big as our sun and shrink it down to something like the size of Minneapolis. Insane. The atoms are so jam-packed together. And as you recall from the video, a teaspoon of this material would weigh the same as a mountain. I would not want to be holding that. But what about the outer shell? What does the outer shell become? <gasps> shock of all shocks? You guessed it, kids. Becomes a nebula, spewing material back out into space. The gases are being returned, the atoms being brought back into the universe for a new generation of stars to form. This is actually, I believe, the Crab Nebula. Uh, a little bit of computer fakery here to make it look as if it's expanding and moving. It, it's so big that we wouldn't see this in our lifetime, but with a little animation help you can see the gases being returned back into the universe. Pretty cool stuff. And of course, again, just like the 1x, a nebula is the end, but it's also the beginning because stars are born from giant nebulas, giant huge stellar nurseries where the gas falls back in together, clumps back because of gravity. And so the end is the beginning. Uh, you know, stars are kind of like phoenixes. They rise from their own ashes. So to reiterate one more time, if we go back to the graphic organizer, we've just completed this section right here. We started with the stellar nursery. We had a 2x star. 2x stars are twice as big as the sun. They make a main sequence star, which fuses hydrogen atoms together to make helium, produces lots of energy. And then when it runs out of hydrogen, it expands and becomes a giant. It puts three helium atoms together to make carbon. And it'll go through that cycle a few more times. It'll take its carbon and fuse its carbon. And it takes the leftovers from that and fuses those and makes that a new fuel too. But eventually, even a 2x will make atoms that are too big for it to be able to jam them together. It doesn't have enough pressure to force those bigger and bigger atoms together. And when that happens, it can't fuse anymore. And here you get not just a nova, but a supernova. The inner core becomes a neutron star. The outer shell gets thrown back out into space to become a new nebula, bringing you all the way back to the stellar nursery. So we're ready to do the 3x now. I know you're on the edge of your seats, children. So here we go. Stellar nursery. Remember our 1x, our 2x. Here comes our 3x story. And the 3x star. Oh, you guys are good. You already knew this, didn't you? Main sequence star. It's fusing hydrogen atoms together to make helium atoms and energy. And it will burn through that stuff fast. And when it runs out of hydrogen, oh, you know what happens next. It's going to expand. But this time it's not just a giant. It's a super giant. That's pretty good. I do my own sound effects. A super giant. It's refusing to stop fusing. Man, it is going for all it's worth. It puts its heliums together to make carbon. Then it fuses the carbon atoms into bigger and bigger and bigger atoms. And it can go even farther than a 2x star because it's so much bigger. It has even more pressure. So it can jam bigger and bigger atoms together. But even the biggest stars out there will get to a point. It's kind of this brick wall that they all hit when they make atoms that are too big atoms that they cannot put together into something more. And when that happens, stand back everybody. When you can't fuse no more, it's time for the colossal, the super, I, I think they should have called it a super duper nova, but scientists never listened to me. And I said the best animation for last year, supernovas are insane. These kind of 3x supernovas produce huge explosions. I mean, you can imagine there's not a single planet or a moon in a solar system like this that could survive a supernova. And even afterwards, I'm not quite sure why you'd want to stick around after that supernova. Oh man, the camera's shaking. Ooh, hold on. Now the core collapses. It's so big, it shrinks down to a white dwarf. It doesn't even slow down. It keeps on collapsing further and further down. It gets to the size of a neutron star, about the size of a city doesn't even phase it. It keeps collapsing 
smaller and smaller and smaller, falling downward until you get yourself, my friends, a black hole, a star that cannot stop itself collapsing. It is collapsing for eternity, infinitely small. Every second that goes by, a black hole compresses more and more. And so, just for you, everybody, woo, falling into the black hole. This guy is not a happy camper. He's in a black hole. Don't become this man. And of course, you can anticipate the outer shell will once again be hurled into space as a nebula, and that nebula could eventually lead to a new star system. It's crazy to think about. And one other crazy thing, and I'll, I'll just back it up a couple steps here, just because it's so weird and wild. Some of the atoms that are around on the Earth today, the really big ones, gold that has 79 protons, and mercury which has 78, and platinum which has 80, and uranium which has 92, all of the really big atoms, they were never ever um, big enough to be formed inside of a star. You can't, there isn't a star around that can make those big of an atom. So where did those really big ones come from? We think they come from this right here. When these stars explode, the heat and intensity is so extreme, it's even more intense than when the star was burning and fusing to begin with. And so some atoms are literally jammed together in the explosions, the deaths and destructions of stars. If you have any gold jewelry of any sort, then my friends, you're holding on to a piece of a star's death right there. So there it is. We have the 1x right here, which you can see in the graphic organizer. You, we had the 2x life cycle, which you can see right here. And of course, the 3x, which runs along this part right here. It's a lot of detail. And so hopefully the graphic organizer has helped you to put it into some perspective. But I understand, you know, it can, it can be confusing, and we may have needed to pause this video a few times and backtrack it so you can hear things over again, and that's fine. We've got, uh, you know, a, uh, another week or so to kind of piece this all together. And really what I want us to start to focus on next is we've got all these pieces. We've got most of the major parts of all of these questions for our, our ISN. In the days ahead, we need to start to put our ISN together and make sure we can answer each of those questions and decide how are we going to put this together and show what you know. How are you going to show me that you understand how stars work? But that, of course, is for a conversation at a later date. So for now, I'm going to sign off. Your teacher has another activity for you to do, which you're going to be able to, to do, obviously, when I shut my mouth and stop the recording. So until then, and until I see you next time, good luck, everybody.